Hello friends, today let's solve zigzag conversion problem. We are given a string s and the integer an uh, integer number rows. We want to convert this string to a zigzag um, like string. And it has the num has the number rows of rows. So let's see this example. What is the uh, uh, zigzag? It's just uh, we want to write a z. So it's a z here. So how to get this uh, shape? We just uh, try to go down. And if we have four rows, we change the direction, we go up. And then uh, until we reach the row zero, we then go down and go up until we exhaust uh, all the characters. So what's the possible way to solve this problem? I think one straightforward solution is that we try to build a 2D array. We, want, we can calculate how many columns we can have, and then we just fill this zigzag string into that 2D array. This is one possible way. How about uh, you may also want to find uh, some rules here, like uh, you may want to count how many characters between this P and I uh, is five. So how can we get this five? We have two characters between it. We have one character, be uh, which is empty character here. So maybe you want to uh, try to find some rules to build this zigzag string. But is that uh, necessary? No, we can just uh, simulate uh, mm, this process to get this zigzag string. Like I said before, we can go from here and go down until the row four, we change the direction and we go up. And when we reach row zero, we change the direction and we go down. So we can use this way to build our result because finally we just want to return p i n p l s i g, which is the characters on the same rows. We uh, they will be together. So for this example, we can first build a string builder list. Why? Because for string builder, we can append the character there. So what I mean here is that we can build a string builder uh, list, which we can call it rows, a new array list. Then for, um, yes, we, we want to know how many number of rows here. So rows will, so for each list here, we can add it. And uh, we add a new uh, empty string builder. So that's it. Mm, so in the end, how to get a result? We can also get a string builder. We call it a result, a new string builder. Then we iterate the every string builder in this uh, rows. Result will append this SB. We just return result to string. So that's it. So how can we get this rows information? We just uh, simulate uh, this progress. So for every char in the string char array, we have to know the current index. Then we decide whether we should change the direction. So we have the curve row. At first, it's zero. So when the curl row is in the zero, because this is when we go from up to, uh, down to up, when it's zero, then we should change the direction. Or the current row is number rows minus one. It's, uh, we reach here, so we should uh, change the direction to go up. Then we have change the direction. So maybe we can call it uh, um, change direction. Mm, maybe going, keep going, right? Keep going first is fourth. So in here, if we reach these two boundaries, we, the going will 
change the direction. OK. So here, if, uh, uh, no, it's not if. Because we want to also reflect uh, this go uh, change direction to the current row if uh, it's going. Right, it's going. Then the row index should uh, uh, increment by one. If it's a change direction, we go up, then we should minus one the row index. This is a row index. So I think we can just uh, mm, can go down. Mm, just uh, follow the same name. Can go down. Can go down. It's just a call. Can go down. OK? Can go down. Mm. This is the direction. How about uh, we should uh, put rows, get uh, the current index, right? Current row, and append this C. So you may wonder why at the very beginning it's false. Because let's see, if you set it to true, then it will go, from, uh, go into this if expression. So then can go down will become false. But if it's false here, we should minus one. That means it should go up. That's wrong. So the reason why we you, we initialize it to false is to we we want to use this if condition collectively. So if you, we set it to false, then we go to this if condition. It will become true. If it becomes true, it can literally go down. So it's plus one. So you should notice it here. OK, is that enough? No. We also should think about the special cases. We first get the n, n equal to s dot length. We have two special cases. If the s will just have one column, what does that mean? It's just if the number of rows greater than n, so it will be one column. The opposite, if it only have one row, if it only have one row, that means the number of rows equal to one. Both of case, it will just re return this original string. So that's the edge case you should notice. OK, I think we have finished it. Thank you for watching. See you next time.